Next thing I'm going to do is to save the part. So I'm just going to go to our save icon up on top and it should come up with the same name as the parasolid file that we brought in. And that's fine. I'm just going to leave that as the default name and hit save. Now it's time to set this up for our turning. Let's go to machine type and tell it we're going to be machining this with a lathe and we'll pick the default lathe. Now we can move into our properties and set up some of our parameters. Starting with our tool settings, I'm going to put in my program number, enter whatever four digit number you like. I'm going to tell it to calculate speeds and feeds from the material and I'm just going to go with my default material type here. I want it to assign tool numbers sequentially and use the tools step, peck, and coolant. Next we're going to take a look at our stock. So we want to set up the stock for the left spindle. I'm going to go to properties. The first thing I want to define is my outer diameter. So I'm going to pick select and pick some point on the outer diameter. So I have uh, 5.618 well, I'm going to start with a raw stock of 5.625. That should be enough for us to clean up the outside of the part. Next, I want to be able to set the length. Now, one of the things you could do in Mastercam is anywhere it requires a number, you can right-click your mouse in that window, and you can input coordinates using any of these functions. Now this is covered in more detail on the interface introduction CD. But we're going to do a distance between two points. Now I'm going to rotate this around a little bit. And when I pick these two points, I want to pick it from the back side of the part to the front side of the part. Because that particular field can only take a positive number. If I went from the front side to the back side I'd get a negative dimension. So I'm going to move over the rim on the back side which is latching on to the center. You can see that with the little icon symbol here. So grab that center point and then I'm going to move over here to this rim and grab the center point and it'll give me the length of the part as 8 inches. What I'm going to do here is change that to 8.1 That'll give me a little stock on both sides to clean up. And I'm going to move this along in the z-axis by 50 thousandths. Now let's do a preview. And I'm going to right click and go back to a top view. And we should be able to see here that there's a little bit of stock on the back, a little bit of stock on the front, and a tiny little bit of stock on the outer diameter there. So that looks like a pretty good stock boundary we'll accept that. Now let's take a look at our chuck jaws. I'm going to go to properties. What I want the operator to do is to bore two steps into the jaws. One is going to be a fairly deep step and the other one only needs to be deep enough to accommodate this. So I'm going to pick this where there's two steps here on the jaw and our zero is going to be from the inside step. That's the type of jaw that I want. And I'm going to tell it that for the jaw height, I'm going to leave that on two inches, and I'm going to leave the step at a half inch. For the jaw width, I'm going to make this three and a half inches. And I'm going to set this step a half inch. We'll take a look at it in a second here. I want it to position from the outside of my defined stock boundary and I want it to grip on one inch. So let's preview that and see what we have. Well, it looks like my numbers aren't quite right there. Let me hit enter. So I think what we'll do is we'll change this to three inches, change this to an inch and a quarter. Let me explain a little bit about what this is going to do as far as how it divides this up. If I say I have a three inch jaw and I want the step, the first step, to be a half inch, that's going to leave two and a half inches, right? Three minus 0.5 is two and a half. Then what it does for the second step 
is it divides the remaining amount in two. So if two and a half inches is left, and I tell it to grip on an inch and a quarter, then I get a perfect meeting to the step of this jaw. So this one's a half inch this way, and I believe it's a half inch this way. Let's go back and take a look at that too. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so three inch jaw width, half inch width step, one inch jaw height, half inch jaw step. We want to position our jaw from the stock and we want a grip length of an inch and a quarter. And we'll okay that. Another thing we're going to add to this, this time, is a tail stock. So for our tail stock, I'm going to tell it the center diameter is going to be a one inch diameter. I'm going to leave the rest with the default parameters here. But I need to tell it where to position it. I don't really want it positioned up at the face right now because I still have to machine this face, machine this channel, and then flip it over. But we're going to want some kind of a center holding this in place because when I flip it over, I'll only be holding on to this small amount here. But to start with, I want my center 12 inches away from the face of the part. And we could preview that too. So there's our center back here. This allows me room for the turret to come in and do any machining. And we'll OK that. And I'm going to tell it to shade the boundaries. That should be all we need for those parameters. Let's OK that.